One of the great things that cities can do is get rid of blight. You know those rows of crack houses and terrible buildings that are falling down? It's called urban renewal, and who would be against it except some angry bald guy? Bruce Baker from the uh, city of Westminster, thank you for being here. Hey, John, love being here. Right. Thank you for much and inviting you, you, me. You put, you put together a great issue paper for us uh, on urban renewal. And yes. it, it's something you can get on our website, independenceinstitute.org. What what's wrong? What's wrong with with urban renewal? This is a beautiful thing. Get rid of those awful buildings. And notice this empty field on the cover, because that's really what's. Is that actually blighted? That field? Yes, sir. That was how, blighted. How the hell can a field be blight? Well, I think it's really wonderful because now that I have this paper, I guess I get to qualify as a pipe smoking, sweater wearing, Volvo drying mm. college professor. Don't nice. <laughs> You're published. <laughs> I'm published, you betcha. Uh, and what I like about this paper is I think it's easy to read and easy to understand. It has wonderful concrete examples. The first one being the picture on the cover. And that is the, an actual picture of a finished lot that's been finished for 12 years now. What do you mean finished? Well, urban renewal was uh, started in this state in the early 50s. And it really piggybacked onto a federal law, which had to do with getting rid of substandard housing. And in our own law, in the legislative intent, which we have in the paper, uh, it basically spells out the reasons. It says that these areas of blight and slum uh, are really focal points for disease and for crime. Oh, yes, sir. So in other words, there, there was a public good that is, if there's buildings falling in on themselves from disrepair, neighborhoods, neighborhoods, neighborhoods falling, falling in on that, themselves, you know, then, then we the people have a responsibility to, to fix it, to clean it up because disease and pestilence and, and drugs and, and dogs sleeping with cats, all of it could happen <laughs> right there. And but, it goes much more than that, John. It goes much more than that because a lot of those things, well, that's that city's problem. That's right. that city's problem. But this was of such a magnitude that it became of statewide interest and statewide importance. And the state has granted awesome powers to the city where these situations right. exist. Let's put that from. into English. So because of this perceived problem, the state empowered cities with power to condemn, power, power to, to take, condemn. power to rebuild, power to, do, to call something blight and then, like, like Superman, tell them what to do. And even more important, to take other sister governments' taxes in the process. I see, this, this amazes me because it's so abused that a field, without any buildings on it at all, can be blighted and therefore taken by government and coerced. Uh, and that, it just boggles my mind. So basically, some lawyers said, I got an idea. Whatever we want to take control of, you just call it blight. We get to do whatever we want. Is that basically <laughs> the way that worked? That is exactly basically the way that works. Because with any kind of government office, we have to grant the people controlling that power, I mean the discretion to make judgment calls. We give like individual, okay, the police officers, enormous discretion because we have to. Right. It's going to be hard to do your job. We do the same thing that with really city governments. And we trust, we cross our fingers and trust that they're not going to abuse the but power. But so often this designation of blight turns in a way for developers to play footsie with the city, take people's land and build something else. Absolutely Give me correct. some examples, would you? Well, uh, what I'll do is I will use the one that in my city, and really the one that really motivated me to run for the city council, because I thought it was so absolutely wrong. And that has to do with the North Huron Urban Renewal Area. And uh, it was done in 2004, and it was basically vacant farm ground. And we called that blighted. We the city. We the city. We called that blight. For what purpose? For what end? Uh, because once we did that, we had access to the revenue streams that other sister governments would have, our county government, our school systems, and we could take any increase in property tax 
or sales tax generated from the ground. So if you take an empty piece of ground and build something on it, that's a huge difference. And that's a lot of money. So let me see if I'm, uh, I'm getting this. So there's an empty lot. We go, hey guys, let's call it Blight. You call it Blight, hey, we got a developer here, we'll give him a nice tax break, you put up a shopping center there, and we make tax revenue on it. Correct. What happens to the other governments that also share that that property? I mean, it's in a city, but it's also in a school district. It's also it's in, in a, a county. county. It's in a state. You know, it might be in a park and rec district as well. It could be in all sorts of districts. And basically, that goes to one of the fundamental things in the law. One of the fundamental purposes of the law was renewal. Not newel, but renewal. Rebuilding something that was old and broken. And in the law, again, in our state law, it quite clearly says that slum and blighted areas are more expensive for governments to maintain. They cost more in the way of fire services, police yeah. services, and everything else. So, so, so like the whole theory behind the concept. I, I, I freaking guarantee you that this, this field has, <laughs> there, there haven't been too many uh, uh, firefights coming here for, for the and, property that's and been. And basically uh, juvenile delinquency yeah, there. there has, you know, the kids living in these houses <laughs> have not been calling, the police have not been called on. Right. You know, the fire department. Truancy. The OSHA, yeah, the truancy here is good. not that bad. Um, and so the governor, what does the government do with that property? It takes it and gives it to somebody else. Well, what it does is, uh, if you want to, if you want to renew something, there's going to be a lot of hurdles to jump through. There's nothing to <laughs> renew. You said there's nothing there. You know, how do you how do you redo a building when it's not there? You can only do a building. Remember, John, the people who 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 of the wrote the law had the most noble purposes in mind. So they were thinking they were thinking of like these horrible slums in the big eastern cities. Okay, and really Colorado sort of got into it like the way we do a lot of federal programs. You know, Free the money. federals are giving away money. Let's get our share. And even though Colorado never had the problems that some of these big Inkster cities had, Philadelphia, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Boston, go on and on and on and on and on. And on. Uh, we wanted to share that money too, okay? But I think, and I say this in the paper too, I think that our free market eliminated all the substandard housing in Colorado. Yeah, it's, you can't have substandard housing in a place that is the hottest market <laughs> in the country, where people are saying, I can't afford the $400,000 to get into a starter home. Yeah. It's, not like, it's not like we have slums because the marketplace says, I'll buy your slum. Right. You buy, I'll, I'll buy that slum for 60 grand, and I'll sell it for 300 grand and flip it. Yeah, so that's not there. And it's really crazy, too, because other authors have looked at this same issue. Really, Robinson and Nevitt back in 2005 looked at it, and they laid out how all this urban renewal and the way it's being used has just given in developers' minds they can make more profit. That's all. All right, real fast, what's the solution? We're running out of time. Uh, the best and most ethical solution is end the program. Declare, I mean, the victory over slums and right. just turn that money into other levels of so government. The, so the state or says... Even give it back to the taxpayers. Yeah. So basically the state would say, cities, you no longer have the power to create right. these urban Correct. renewal districts. You want, to, you want to give a break to some uh, developer buddy, some crony. Do it with that's, your own money. That's your money. That's right. Not, not state that's money. That's right. So is... The state that would be the this. best thing to do. If we can't do that, and we have to deal with, right. I mean, the reality of the world, is we can means test it. And say it's actually going to be a poor so, yeah, place. So if we have a poor city, let them use it. Bruce Baker, thank you. Check out his issue paper at independenceinstitute.org. Check out me on KHOW. We'll see you next week. Thank you, John.